Oh, Travis Wingood so. So, uh, the uh, backup supply of uh, my new apostate garments, underwear, has arrived. <coughs> uh, last week, uh, the 16th, the Tuesday before my birthday, I uh, wanted to have everything, uh, the rest of the bottoms, uh, thrown away so that uh, that's out of my life forever. They were, they were holy anyway. <laughs> uh, where's the drum roll? And uh, I wanted to get transitioned into the wearing the new stuff and I'm kind of disappointed because I couldn't find white you know the church conditions you to white and that adjusts your laundry and, uh, and so there's some adjusting that is going on in my life as a result uh, I'm not sure I want to go into the colors of the rainbow for my underwear. <laughs> I just, I, there's no need for colors because nobody's going to be seeing me in my underwear. <clears throat> so uh, that, that was one of the reasons that I didn't want to wear underoos. Not just that my peers had already pre-stigmatized them so that if any kid would be caught wearing them, uh, they would get ridiculed and mocked and beaten up and all that. So when my mom, of course, then showed up uh, one day and said, Hey kids, here's underoos. You like Superman, don't you? Mom, how could you? Ah, I'm not wearing these. It's only got hand me down to my brother when he was big enough for him, as he wore his. Uh, she never asks. She just does. And expects us to like him. You ungrateful kids! <laughs> well, if you asked. But yeah, as a kid, I could never tell anybody that I liked the color pink because of what happened to Beth. But, uh, and I couldn't let my anybody know that I secretly desired to grow up to be a woman's fashion designer. So, not as a Mormon boy, Mormon child, how dare I play with girl dolls, <laughs> gonna turn out gay, uh, no, and weirdly enough, when I played with the little people, I guess they're actually called people by Fisher Price, uh, it was always me, and all of the the female representations they're just dolls obviously but here I am as a little child practicing polygamy <laughs> Mormon Mormonism really messes you up but uh, I had no concept of what sex was how are babies born my dad never told me I had to figure it out from the code words that my peers had been saying all this time. And then uh, and in Little League, uh, the, uh, the other players 
had already been there earlier and had seen the magazine in the bushes. And so when I arrived, one of the boys, as the other boys were standing back laughing, going, oh, yeah, I know what he's going to see, I uh, said, here, come here, I want to show you something. I'm here to play ball. I want to practice. Come on, it'll just take a minute. And uh, so, yeah, I go over and see a woman down on her knees. We call him master and servant. So I'm not quite sure if that's what Depeche Mode was talking about, because it's two guys, right? <laughs> they don't do that kind of stuff. Morally straight for Boy Scouts. And, uh, uh, yeah, and I still remember it. So, yes, President Packer is right. The memory sticks in your mind. And I still remember the other magazine picture when my mom had plotted against my brother and I. <laughs> we were driving home, and all of a sudden she pulls over to the side of the road and says, Get out. In the back there's trash bags. Pick up the trash on your way home. <laughs> so I was pissed. I uh, just ended up walking home. I didn't pick up a single thing. And I should have in hindsight. And when I got home, I went, oh, crap. I should have. Oh, man. <laughs> because there opened up was a magazine to a specific page of uh, teaching women how to shave. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just walked on by, and I didn't even think that my brother would then see it. Uh, he would have immediately picked it up and thrown it away. And so I thought, maybe I should go digging through the garbage. <laughs> I never did. But, uh, yeah, it's strange growing up Mormon with the, the contradictions of Mormonism from the Mormons versus what you read in Scripture. It's just like, my hell. You know, they talk about you have to wear the magic underwear. And then you read, well, you hear when you're going through your initiatories, the final booth is putting on the magic underwear. Uh, it represents the garment given to Adam when he was found naked in the Garden of Eden. And it was combined, Adam and Eve, when they were found naked in the Garden of Eden. And, uh, which is called the garment of the Holy Priesthood. Inasmuch as you do not defile it, but are true and faithful to your covenants, it will be a shield and a protection to you against the power of the destroyer until you have finished your work on the earth. And so, you, you, you think about that, and you're wearing it underneath your clothes, and your clothes are supposed to cover it all up. Heaven forbid if I should show some skin. <laughs> this video now going to get banned for being pornographic. <laughs> Nobody wants to see you, Travis. That was gross and disgusting. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> and uh, uh, we just are left wondering because Mormon, other Mormons don't think about it apparently I was the only one who thought about it because Adam and Eve were given a garment because they were told by the snake that they were naked and so they all of a sudden were ashamed Oh my God, we're naked. Oh, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Heavenly Father says, You found out I had you created naked? <laughs> Cover yourselves up. <sighs> <laughs> but it's an outer garment. It's clothing, like this. It's not underwear. 
Adam and Eve were not walking around in their underwear. And so, yeah, the, why anybody would wear colored or underoos that nobody else is supposed to be looking at? You're not supposed to go streaking around in your underoos at school. <laughs> You'd be called to the principal's office. And then your mother would be called. <sighs> Just teaching kids how to streak. I tell you. But, uh, I also had to get uh, I, a nightlight. I had nightlight. I had a nightlight in the bathroom, and just for some reason, it stopped working. I tried another light bulb; it wasn't working. And I thought, well, is it the plug? So I tried it on another plug. No, it's still not working. I guess the actual nightlight itself just gave up the ghost. And so, yeah, I bought myself some new light bulbs. They're halogen light bulbs. They came with a bulb. So that's cool. Looks like I might be able to put in the old bulbs that I still have a supply for. So that could be good. We'll see how long these last. But I plugged it in as I had the uh, hall light. Uh, not, not this one. Yeah, not this one. But there's another one over here uh, by the bedroom door and the bathroom and uh, so I plug it in and it just sort of sparks but then just goes off and I'm like this is weird is it not working <laughs> did I buy defective bulbs or defective light things and, and uh, uh, then it occurred to me well let's is it really and so yeah, it has to be in the dark to be turned on. There's no on and off switch. It's light sensor. So when it's dark, it turns on. Really cool stuff. And it's nice to have modern technology. But uh, yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. But uh, conserves energy because when I'm in the bathroom, the light's on, it's off. Cool. So, that's just my little video here for you. Uh, the prophets are, are gathering at the administration building, I assume, for their weekly meetings since they can't meet in the Salt Lake Temple of Zion, as they're now calling it. That's the Temple of Zion. They've already built it. All this time, they never told us, although Mormons have been telling me. No, oh, no. Salt Lake City is now the new Zion. And I didn't believe them because the scriptures say we're going to go back to Missouri. <laughs> and that's what we're getting taught in seminary and institutes and church. Is that we're going back. But they never get to Sunday school teaching about the book of Revelation. We always miss those and uh, yeah they never talk about signs in the heavens you know the manuals they don't even go over it now we know why but uh, the church just to continue the hour and a half video I did this morning uh, they've already not only been taking away scripture from us so that things are covered up and it's I, I'm recognizing that they are going to phase out scriptures and replace them with prophets speaking to everybody like Big Brother from 1984 or a spokesperson in place of Big Brother because uh, Big Brother was he never really talked he just had his picture there with his eyes on you and it was a uh, a guy who would stand before them and speak the words of Big Brother to the crowd, uh, stirring up their emotional responses. And, uh, you know, but yeah, Sunday school, when Nelson decided to s 
to cut Sunday school in half, taking out a an hour of the three hour church. I went, oh, okay. He's trying to cut back on Mormon's learning of scripture. Interesting. And of course he came out and said, oh, I expect you guys to have family home evening on Sundays now. Mormons don't do that, do ya? Uh, you still do it on Monday. Oops, you're disobeying the prophet. You guys are evil. You're using the Sabbath day established by a pope from Con Constantine who changed the Babylonian, uh, well, the Jewish version of the Babylonian assimilation of Saturday, the seventh day of the week, which was superstitious, similar to, oh no, i got to wear my underwear, they're magically delicious, and, uh, hmm, yeah, they do have edible undies, don't they? Uh, I, I don't think I can, no, no, there's just too many problems with that. Too many problems. No. No. And, and colors for the wash. Uh, hot water kills germs and bacteria. Coloreds aren't supposed to have hot water. They're supposed to be warm, depending on whether they're dark or... or uh, well, they're supposed to be light coloreds is warm. Dark colored... That's supposed to be your cold water. That doesn't kill anything. The soap doesn't do that. Soap is just for perfume. <sighs> so, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> now, I think I've said enough here.